Hi guys, I welcome you all to this session. Today, we will be looking at a conjunction of two very interesting topics, them being Python and ethical hacking. So before we actually jump into the video, let's discuss the topics that we will be covering throughout the session. So these are the topics that I'll be covering. Firstly, I will give a brief introduction to hacking and ethical hacking, along with Python, that is our language of choice for today. And they will, then we will see why exactly Python is gaining popularity amongst ethical hackers. In the end, I will also be coding a simple password cracker that uses a dictionary attack to crack passwords. This is going to be simple and a lot of fun, so let's jump in. Now, before we actually get in, let's discuss a little bit about hacking and ethical hacking both. Now, the term hacking has been around for a long time. The first recorded instance of hacking actually dates back to the early 1960s in Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where both the terms hacking and hacker were coined. Since then, hacking has actually evolved into a broadly followed discipline for the computing community. Now, hacking is the process of finding vulnerabilities in a system and using these found vulnerabilities to gain unauthorized access into the system to perform malicious activities, ranging from deleting system files to stealing sensitive information. Now, hacking is illegal and can lead to extreme consequences if you are caught in the act, and people have been sentenced to years and years of imprisonment because they were hacking and causing a lot of malicious harm. Nonetheless, Hacking can be legal if done with permission. Computer experts are often hired by companies to hack into their systems to find vulnerabilities and weak endpoints so that they can be fixed. This is done as a precautionary measure against legitimate hackers who have malicious intent. Such people who hack into a system with permission without any malicious intent to improve the system are known as ethical hackers and the process is known as ethical hacking. Now that I've given you guys a brief introduction to the topic that is ethical hacking, let's have a discussion on the language of choice for today, and that is Python. Now, Python is generally purposed, uh, I'm sorry, Python is a general purpose programming language, which is another way to say that it can basically do everything. Most importantly, it is an interpreted language, which means that the written code is not actually translated to a computer readable format at runtime. Whereas most programming languages do this conversion before the programming even starts. Now, this type of language is also referred to as a scripting language because it was initially meant to be used for trivial projects. Now, the concept of scripting language has changed considerably since its inception because Python is now used to write large commercial styled application instead of just banal ones. This reliance on Python has grown even more so as the internet gained popularity. And now a large majority of web applications and platforms rely on Python, including Google search engine, YouTube, and the web oriented transaction system of the New York Stock Exchange system. You know the language must be pretty serious when it's powering a stock exchange system. In fact, NASA also actually uses Python when they are programming their equipments and space machinery. Pretty neat, right? Now, Python can also be used to process text, display numbers or images, solve scientific equations, and save data. In short, it is used behind the scenes to, proce uh, to process a lot of elements you might need or encounter on your device, including mobile phones. So, this brings us to the question of today, that is, why choose Python for ethical hacking? Well, Python has gained its popularity mostly because of its super powerful, yet easy to use libraries. Sure, Python has some awesome readability and it's really simple, but uh, nothing really beats the fact that your job as a developer is made super simple with these libraries. These libraries um, can find users in all sorts of domains. For example, artificial intelligence has PyTorch and TensorFlow, while data science has Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, and so on. Similarly, Python is brilliant for ethical hacking due to its amazing networking related libraries. These include names like Pulsar Python, which is a library that provides an easy way to build scalable network programs. Pulsar uses the AsyncQ module from the standard Python library, and it can be configured to run in a multiprocessing mode. There's also Napalm, which stands for Network Automation and Programmability Abstraction Layer with multi-vendor support. And it is a Python library that implements a set of functions to interact with different router vendors and devices using a unified API. 
Above that, Python was invented to be a scripting language, if you guys remember. Even though it is used for large-scale applications today, its power is truly shown when you are using it to automate small stuff. Basic scripting, that is what I mean. Now, as an ethical hacker, you are not really going to build all sorts of system applications. What you're going to do is actually automate stuff that you do on a regular basis so you can save some time. For example, you can automate, I suppose, a network scan or a password cracking process. So let me give you guys a small demonstration as to how an ethical hacker may use Python in his day-to-day -day job. So suppose you were scanning for a three-way handshake between an FTP server and a client, and you were successful in doing so. But as you guys might already know, passwords are never really stored in plain text. They are always hashed before being stored in the database, and normally the hash itself is compared for verification purposes. So let us create a small Python program that is used to crack a password using the dictionary attack method. Now, we are going to be using Sublime Text to write our code. And I'm going to be using this important library called Hashlib. So let me just go ahead and import Hashlib first. Now, Hashlib, OK, well, let me just actually zoom in so that you guys can see the code properly. OK, so Hashlib was known as MD5 in Python 2.7. But since Python 3 came out, it's been converted to Hashlib and MD5 has been deprecated. So the whole point of this program is that suppose you have a hash of a certain word and you have a list of words through which you can actually um, compare the hash. So this list of words is basically your probable passwords and the input hash is the definite password that you have in your hand. So first of all, what we want to do is input the hash that is going to be compared. So what we want to do is set up a variable called pass hash and then input and say um, enter MD5 hash. Let's put a colon and space so everything looks neat. Now what we want to do is also take in a file uh, which has a bunch of words written into it. So this file is basically going to act as our dictionary. Now I have already downloaded a file from GitHub which has a bunch of probable passwords that is normally used in a dictionary attack. So I'm just going to be using that. But we can also do something like this. So let's say word list and we are going to input the file. So the user is going to put in the file name out here. Now what we want to do is try and open this file with some read permissions. So we are going to put this in a try block. So let's say pass file is equals to um, we want to open our file. Uh, our file is called word list. And we want to give it some read um, permissions. So that's very simple. Um, now, if you don't find the file, actually, if you enter a wrong file name, we want to uh, throw out an error. So we want to say print no file found. Right. And when this happens, we also want to quit the program so that the user can go ahead and start all over again. We don't really want to prompt it to give in a new file name because that will just increase the complexity of a very simple program. Now, what we are going to do next is type in the logic of how we are going to compare the hashes of the different words that we are going to find in this file. So basically, we are going to start up a simple for loop and say so for word in pass file. And now we just want to compare. So an important trivia about Hashlib or Python in general is when you are trying to hash any string on Python, it has to be of a certain encoding. Uh, of certain encoding. So this encoding is called UTF-8. You might have heard about it. So we need to convert a word into an encoded format. So let's set up a new variable and call it encoded word or Let's make it a little smaller, encoded word. And what we want to do is say word.encode. And we want to give it the UTF-8 encoding. Right. Next, what we want to do is create a hash digest. Because hashing will basically create a hashed object. Now, this object has to be also made into a hexadecimal format. So now this hexadecimal format in technical terms is called the hex digest, and that is exactly what we are going to try and output out here. So let's declare a variable called digest. 
And this is the hash lib function that we're going to be using. So firstly, we want to convert our word into MD5 format. So we're just going to hash it according to the MD5 algorithm. And what the word that we are hashing is called encoded word. Now we also want to strip it of any white spaces that it might have. So let's use the strip function. And in the end, we want to produce the hex digest. So hex digest. And hex digest is an inbuilt function of the hash lib library. So this is where you see the power of libraries in Python. I'm not doing any sort of complex coding. I know what a function does and I know how to use it. Okay, so seems like you can't hear me. So let me just increase the volume. Okay, so I hope that fixed the volume a little bit. Anyways, not much is left, so let me just get through this. Now, what we wanna do after creating the hash is we wanna compare our hash with all sorts of uh, hashes that, the input hash rather, the input hash, we wanna compare it with all sorts of hash that we are producing from the words in the dictionary attack. So what we wanna do is say, if digest is equal to equal to, um, the pass hash. So we want to compare it to the pass hash. So let's input that. And we want to start up our if block. So if this is found, we want to say print password has been found. And to be useful, to be a useful programmer, you also want to print out what the password exactly is. So we can say something like password is uh, just put a space and then a plus and what you want to print out is the word So this word is going to be the password because the hash for it actually matched in this case Now what we want to do is break out of this loop So we can do this simply with the break uh, Break keyword Now this actually handles if the password is only in the list But what happens if the password is not in the list? So we need, a, we need to create a situation for that. So that can be easily handled by actually creating a flag. So whenever a password is found, what we wanna do is set the flag as anything but zero. So flag is one. <coughs> I'm sorry for that, I have a really bad cold. Now what we wanna do outside of the for loop is we wanna check for the flag again. Now if the flag is still zero, you wanna say that our password, or or you might say passphrase, is not in the list. So that actually uh, sums up our program. Okay, so let me just run this program and show it to you guys. So I have saved this program in this particular file out here. So as you guys can see, it's saved in this file. Um, let's go to desktop and password cracker. So as you guys can see, I have this Python file saved and it's the file we just created. As you guys can see, it's called crack.py and that is exactly this file. And what you see out here are two different files. Now first is the password list. Now, as you guys can see, this contains a bunch of passwords that could probably be a password for a bunch of accounts all around the world. And this is how you use a dictionary attack. You have a dictionary, which is basically a text file, and then you go ahead and compare the hashes. Now, I also have a few hashes saved just to prove uh, how this program works. So let's go ahead and run this program. Uh, now, what we want to do to run this program is run a terminal on this address. So just go in and type CMD and it will open up a command prompt on that address. That's a neat little trick you learned today, I guess. Now, what you want to see is Python and crack.py. Now it will ask for an MD5 hash. Now I know my MD5 hashes. So for a fact, I know that this MD5 hash exists in my list. So let me just go ahead and copy that and paste it out here. And now it will ask me for the name of the file, which is pass list. So pass list.txt. And as you guys can see, it immediately outputs that the password has been found and the password is called Lil Mama. Now that's a very funny password to have, but let me just input a few lines of code to explain how our code is actually working. Now before this if statement actually runs, let's print out a few stuff. So as you guys can see, uh, 
Firstly, let me print out the word that is being currently hashed. Let me print out the digest of that same word. And then we also want to print out, um, let's see, the hash that we are constantly comparing it against. So that is saved as pass hash. So this will give you an idea of the working of this program. So let's just save it. Let's go ahead and run it now. I'm going to be looking for the same hash to save some time. And we're going to go through pass list. Now, as you guys can see, this is now going to start and compare every single hash that is out there. And this is exactly how most password crackers work. Well, they might not use the MD5 algorithm because most passwords today don't really use MD5. MD5 was broken a long time back. Things like SHA-256 are normally used this day. But that too, with SHA-256 and with a good dictionary, you can basically crack any password. And this will keep on going and going and going until it actually finds it. Now, let me just quit out of this because this will take up a lot of time. Now, to just show you how many passwords we are actually going through before reaching our final password, let me just set up a counter here. So let's set this counter to zero. Let's also comment these out. And every time before entering the if statement, what we want to do is and I'll tell you, immediately it tells us that password or passphrase is not in this list. And let's also go through another part where we enter a wrong file name. So if we enter some wrong file name like pass list 2 it'll tell us no file found. So all parts of a program is working. Okay guys, so that was all for today's video. I hope you took away something of value from today and you learned how Python is actually used by ethical hackers out there in the professional world. Goodbye.